three sounds with phase plant. That's what we're looking at today. There's a ton of different types of resounds. There's some of my favorite sound design things to make. There's a hundred different variations. There's so many cool things you could do along the way. So I want to show you the basics of how to make one and let's just dive right in. So a resound in general is just a sound that beats against itself. So if you have two signal sources, let's just add a signal source and another signal source and move this one up so that it is going out the same output. If you have two signal sources and you play notes, it is in phase with itself. There's, there's no cool moving around. So if you were to slightly change one of these guys' frequencies, though, you could get a resound. So there's a couple ways you could do it, but we're going to be focusing on the semi-scent. And if we move this up just a little bit, like you could go real small. We'll go to like 0.32, sometimes as high as 0.5. And you get resync. So that's what resync is. And what it's happening is as the one wave is at moving at a slightly different frequency, that causes it to be ever so slightly longer or shorter, depending which way you, you know, tuned it up or down. And that's going to cause some phasing over the period of the other waveforms cycle, or whichever one you want to consider the reference, I guess. But that's it. You just make two waves and you make one slightly out of tune. The more out of tune, the, the crazier the recent will be until you lose the reese altogether and it becomes a modulation. But yeah. And there's a really cool effect this way. So we did it via this tuning option. There's a way to do it so that the beat stays the same rate. But I really like the fact that lower notes beat slower or they, they reese slower than higher notes. Higher notes go a lot faster. Fast, slower, slowest. So I kind of set this according to whatever I want sort of my slowest to be. However, your range will, will depend. But that's the basics of setting up a reese. Couple cool options you can do here. You don't have to use similar waveforms. So for, and they don't even have to be in the same octave, as long as they're, they have comparable amplitude and they are close to each other and are related by an octave, it'll still work out. So let me show you what I mean. So let's say we just make this a triangle wave. So it's a triangle wave. It's still going to cause those weird phasing things since it's of a similar amplitude and it's a ratio of the first wave. Now you notice that one's a lot more subtle and you might think, oh, that doesn't sound as good, but you gotta be thinking into the future because we're gonna do a few things to this to really make it beefy. Namely, we're gonna compress it and we're going to distort it. And because of that, the way the wobble comes in and out is really gonna be brought out. So these shapes are the beginning of that idea. So you wanna be aware of that now. Uh, let's do square wave. Now square wave uh, is just in comparison, a louder signal than this. So it's gonna sort of dominate. <laughs> And then, of course, you can do a full square reese. And you get a pulse width modulation sort of effect. And so that is what we've got going on here. Um, that's the beginning of, of picking the waves. Let's move over to the next section, which is now that we've got our reese sort of figured out. And I'm going to go ahead and go with the triangle, the triangle saw combination. I like that subtle bit. Uh, up next, I typically like to go for my dynamic compression because it's going to have a big impact on how it sounds at the end. And so if you set that up now, it makes it a little easier, I find, to pick your effects while you're in the center. So for that, I'm going to come to the last lane and I'm going to add a... Uh, <laughs> I forgot what his name. I think it phase plant. It's not multi-pass. That's what it is. Multi-pass. Now, I choose multi-pass because it's multi-band, and when it comes to dynamics, there's a bunch of presets. So if you come up to the little preset area and look around, we can see in here we have one for dynamics, and we've got a bunch of different dynamic options. I'm going to go with not to begin. We can sort of hear what it does. So I'm going to go with not each one will also give you a series of controls and you're able to adjust the sound after. So for example, we could come up here, change the amount of upwards compression, or we could change, remove the downwards, or the upwards, whatever your heart desires. 
So we're going to go ahead. We're going to go with not for now. And this is just going to compress the range a bit for us. Maybe we'll bring the mids up. Or scoop them. It is up to you. This mid control is going to be super handy. So now that we have this, we're going to move to the next stage. So you set up your Reese, you pick your dynamics. Now we're going to go over to distortion. Distortion is like so important. There are three distortions you really want to know uh, with phase plant at least. And they are the phase distortion, the fuzz distortion, which is faturator and just the regular old distortion distortion. And so we're going to go ahead. We're going to start with phase distortion. This one by itself, sometimes you get good results, but sometimes it's really just good as a stage to set something else like the other distortion plugin up or fatuator up. So I'm going to go ahead and just really quick configure this. I'm going to, the tone and the drive in particular are what I'll be looking at. And we'll do some spread, just get a little bit of stereoness going on. That's tone. Okay, with that set up, let's go let's dial in these mids here now. Now we can follow it up with another process. I'm going to go ahead and shrink it for now, and we're going to add on a faturator. Why not? So this, I, I find that this works really well with leads in the high register. It could sometimes work in the lower register. Now we might try out a different shape. And change up the tuning. I think a little more. Be okay. We could also experiment with an octave down. Oh yeah. So that's a little bit of fatuator, and let's go ahead. Let's bypass that, and let me show you distortion. Distortion gives you um, <laughs> disperser. Uh, a lot of flavors because of, you know, they've got all these algorithms here. And this is where it might come in here and change the tone to something more like right that. That's with the mid sum. But as you can see, we can get quite aggressive sounds quite quickly. And if you start playing in the high register, I like to bring Faturator in. And this, the order this happens in will matter a ton. So if we bring this down, completely different result. So I tend to have the phase distortion in the front, but I will move it around just to see the effects I can get. And sometimes it'll just end up later in my chain because I think it's cooler. Uh, one other thing I like to do is I like to experiment with a pre-reverb stage, pre to the, d the d dynamics, I swear I can talk. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna add a reverb here. And the reverb could go here or it could go here. You could have one before and after. This is gonna hit this compression and I find that that sometimes helps quite a bit. With this sort of a thing, I keep the mix on the lower side. I bring the size uh, down typically. You you could try for a bigger one. And the decay, I try to I dial it back quite a bit. Just gives it a little bit more life. So once you've got your awesome Reese sound and you're good to go, you're going to want to save the preset and name it and all that jazz or save the project. We'll, we'll call ours, you know, Dank Reese Phase Plant. Why not? And now what we're going to do is let's let's toss some drums in first and get a better vibe for this. And something we might try is adding in some glides and some slides. So right now, we've got this this right here that's it's beautiful, but it'd be really nice if this slid up to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to open back up phase plant. They've got a pitch bend range. So this is when you move the pitch knob on a MIDI controller, this is how much it moves by. I'm going to set this to 12, an octave, because an octave is usually pretty useful. Sometimes... Just two is also very, very useful. It depends on what you think you might be doing. I'm gonna leave it at 12 and we're gonna go ahead 
and open up the keyboard down here. And this is where the pitch bend knob lives. Alternatively, you can make this a monophonic synth and use Glide. The reason I'm not gonna use Glide is because I like having the ability to control it sort of as I feel, and the note will still trigger when we hit it uh, because they are separate. And you'd have to do stuff with overlapping notes and it's just a different way of working. I'm gonna do this way because it's gonna be more of what I want. So, but just so you're aware, there's a glide option. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take this and automate it uh, however your dog does it, do it that way. I'm using a custom shortcut to make it easier. So here it is. This is our center pitch. It's set at 0.5 by default. And we just want this to go up and we're gonna set this back at 0.5. We want it to go back to in tune. And then maybe, maybe a slight bend up is all we need. Maybe a more aggressive one. Yeah, maybe that's a little too much. Something like that. I'm settling on more of this slow, this lower shape. Maybe we bend up a little quicker. And then at the end, we just sort of zip right up. It's a lot less noticeable than I thought it would be. Something kind of like that. And something that actually with Reese's that could sound really cool um, is if you, instead of pitch bending the whole thing, we just pitch bend one of the oscillators. Uh, that can change the beating and that oftentimes also produces a really cool effect. So in order to affect individual parameters, I'm going to go ahead and just link this thing to a macro. <laughs> I gotta, I'm so used to dragging. Okay, so we're just going to bring this up. Um, not very much. How much, how much is that? That's a ton. Okay, let's go like, like half a percent. So if you're trying to do what I'm doing, don't do it this way. If you just right click on it, you can type a value in, but I'm being a maniac and trying to draw it. Uh, so this is, you know, let's try this one. One point, what is it, six? Still a little too much. Let's just try one. And let's have it go slowly. And a little less, a little less please. Maybe we delete this as well and slow it way down. And have this be just less. Maybe have it be a slight little thing. And maybe we link this. The thing about macros, once you've automated one, we can sort of experiment with others too. So maybe we have this move by a similar percentage, but less. So at the end, the gap will be, what is that, one? That's 1.09. So maybe make this like one point, I don't know, two. Okay, so I've settled on this shape. And it's always kind of nice to go back to the original tuning if you've messed with it because you might be surprised uh, what can happen after you move everything. This will put them a bit closer together so the influence will be a little larger. Instead of it fighting with every two periods, it's only gonna be fighting with one, so the beating will be more pronounced. Try a different shape. and so on and so forth. From there, you could try a million different things. You can automate a million different things. There, You have just a billion choices. And that's also just with one layer. You could have an entirely separate layer dedicated to just the attacks of the notes. Uh, you know, the world is open to you. But this is the basics of working with a Reese and getting something going. And I think as an element in a mix, this is pretty much there. And what we need to do now is add in some other things. Uh, for example, chords or melody or focus a little bit more on what we want the drums to be doing, maybe mixing them together and getting more of a jam going. But that is the basics of Reese making. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.
day. 